old school. Mahogany boom box. Ladies have had of these things. I just bought this vintage Gombox conga the other day and it came with the original stand. Just been checking it out. I tuned it up a little bit and played it. The tuning was uh, pretty easy. And the, um, the tall conga stand, that hardware is missing and they put a couple of plastic uh, plugs in there. IC3000, 10 and 3 quarter. I'll go around and loosen these all, take the head off and see what's happening inside. Maybe wax the bearing edge so it's nice and polished and uh, put some lubricant on the, um, on the tension rods and the nut in each area and uh, probably buff the, uh, the hardware a little bit with super fine steel wool. I'll test a little spot. Usually that, that works really well. You can see it looks pretty spotty, but um, still in good condition. And uh, yeah, Just, so this is steel wool pads and it says finishing grade. This is important that you look at the rating super fine and it's got number 0000. zero, zero, zero. And the fewer zeros, the more coarse it is. So it's the super fine for a super fine finish. I'll do a little quick demo on cleaning the side plate chrome. <laughs> I tore off a little piece of the steel wool and I'm just going to hold the drum on top. I'm not actually touching the wood with the steel wool. It might look like it from the camera's point of view, but I'm not. Check this out. Even the screw heads, you can rub right onto the screw heads and it'll just smooth those out a bit. It looks vintage. It's got the bling, ladies and gentlemen, the bands. I love the bands, all four of them. The bands are aluminum. Pop this off the shell and we're gonna see the original color underneath. Amazing. It was a very dark mahogany finish on there. And um, just like that at the top, where it's shielded from the ultraviolet rays under the, under the head, you can see that color. And um, the funny thing about this drum, and there's the color, again, the shell was shielded by the stand. One of the rings from the stand right there. But the funny thing about this is that although it's scratched and so on, there's still a good, strong finish on the drum. Even if I wanted to return to this color, I would have to sand down or use a, a varnish stripper um, to clean the old varnish off before I can do anything with it. Uh, because really it's got to be taken down to the bare wood and then stained and then a top coating of varnish on it. Um, but you know, as I say, I, I like the color of the drum. I like the fact that it looks aged and uh, even though it's kind of intriguing to see that original color. Well, now that I've taken that plate off and reversed it to have a look at it, I discovered an interesting thing and I'm now reconsidering. I don't think I'm gonna do anything different with this side plate because see how it's nice and tight there. And if I flip it around, I would expect it to look bent out of shape, but actually it's nice and tight. 
So this is a complex curve in the shell. In other words, it's, it's curving in like a circumference. Um, but at the same time, the uh, profile of the shell is going from narrow at the top to a wider belly and then narrow at the bottom. So you, you have a compound curve happening. And the way, I don't know, it, it's possible that um, they curve the side plate in a way that fits tight to the shell on the top but because it's a compound curve, it's not curved to be tight at the bottom. I'm not totally convinced that that's bent because of tension. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm just gonna reinstall it. If I run into trouble down the road and I think this thing is bending out of shape, then I'll do something about it. But at the moment, I really don't see a need. Okay, so this bearing edge is uh, actually quite rough to the touch. Um, so what I might do with this is rub it with some super fine steel wool or maybe um, super super fine uh, wet dry sandpaper um, and just kind of buff it smooth and then I might put a bit of wax on there. But I, I don't want to put anything on there that, that will absorb into the head. Um, it's a little piece of metal or something there. And I just got rid of that little scrap of metal that was stuck on there. But the bearing edge is pretty rough, uh, as you would expect with the end grain on some mahogany that wasn't probably um, sanded super smooth. But the inside of the head is pretty rough also, so that could have contributed to the roughness on the end grain. I'm going to do a little demo on cleaning a conga head. I think this is the original head. As I mentioned before, it seems to have a, a shadow there, uh, actually right about there. But it's hard to say, I mean, it could just be dirt. I remember, especially back in the day, even famous congueros that um, were doing concerts and recordings and albums, you see pictures and, and old film, maybe even video of them, and their congas were always saturated with lots of good sweat. Top percussionists had uh, heads that were just tightened down on their drums, crooked, real dirty. Everybody just played those skins until they just burned right out. I'm gonna just take a paper towel and some warm water and just wipe this thing. So you can see there very quickly it's starting to look a lot fresher and all that grime is just coming right off with water. This is the original, most likely the original head. The stickiness is uh, disappearing as it dries. Pretty cool, but I'm gonna have to soak it and take it off this flesh hoop and replace it. There's another thing I want to point out about this. The flesh hoop is almost buried in the skin on one side. There's almost nothing for the hoop to grab onto and push down on on this part of the head. You can see it's very thick here. This skin is very thick on this side and quite thin on this side. So that means that there's going to be uneven tension happening. It's thick like this on one side and it's thin like this on the other side. 
So what I'll have to do with this one is soak this one until it's soft. Take the skin off the flesh hoop, which is a steel hoop inside there, and reuse it. But the hoop is kind of bent. It's not totally flat underneath, and it's also got a bit of an oval shape. There's a pretty big gap right here. Here I cut a piece of wood to try and bend the flesh hoop into uh, a better circle because it's, uh, it's bent in a few different directions. I've cut a piece of mahogany into the shape of a circle or part of a circle and I'm going to use this clamp to clamp the flesh hoop into that section and see if I can get it a bit rounder than it is right now. So I did some work on it and I got it straightened up and rounded out quite well. So I got this flat skin, the new conga head. It's um, came to me flat so that I can form it onto the conga. So this is a uh, medium, medium thin um, thickness, soft enough to uh, form with the flesh hoop and with the, um, the crown hoop. What's probably going to be two or three days to make sure it's good and dry um, underneath the crown hoop. Um, then we're going to see what it sounds like. Really looking forward to it. I noticed that the shell uh, probably has a little bit of flex. It's mahogany. What I did was I installed a, an alma into the inside of the drum and um, I'll show you that product in a minute. So here's a closer view of the alma that I put in here, which is in this case an aluminum a band. Um, the interesting thing about putting a reinforcement ring inside a conga is that because of the profile of the drum, um, you know, it's the outside profile of the shell is on an angle. So this opening here is one dimension, but as soon as you go a little bit below this top edge of the opening, the drum is actually bigger because it gets wider. Uh, it's, it's on an angle kind of like this. I'm exaggerating it. Um, so if you, you know, there's a number of ways to put a reinforcement ring into these and some people weld like a steel ring and they put it down in there and you know you can put epoxy or something else behind it to fill in the gap so what i thought i'd try is um using a material that has some flex to it but is still uh very strong so i found this product it's um it's actually a, a threshold uh part of a threshold system for uh entry doors um sure trim and it's just an aluminum seam binder. You can see that. Um, you know, you buy it at the big box or any hardware store that sells that kind of stuff. It's not expensive. Here's one that's not been taken out of the package yet. Um, so you can see it when it's straight. It's got some holes in it for putting screws in. One side has kind of a, a finish on it. And the other side is ribbed. I don't know if you can see that. It's got some grooves in it lengthwise. And so, you know, it's, it's fairly rigid, but I'm just gonna flex it a little bit. You can see a little bit of flex there. So I made a, um, a plywood jig with um, a circle cut into two pieces. Um, that was a tighter circle than this is because when you bend metal Usually there's a rebound factor. It, it, it opens up again after you've bent it. So I made a jig that's uh, a tighter uh, Diameter than this so that when it springs back, it's closer to the shape of this but the advantage I wanted to explore with this material and this idea is that I let it overlap actually. The, the piece is, it's not a butt joint. It's actually overlapping itself. So the idea is, you know, you can, you can spring load the uh, diameter of it, put it inside 
the shell and then let it expand again back out so it's it's actually tight against the inside of the shell and it actually pushes against not a lot but it's it pushes enough that it actually holds itself just sitting in there i drilled holes in it for the screws that are um, a slightly larger hole than the screw and i didn't uh, tighten the screws down super hard or anything uh, and the idea there is if there is some slight amount of um, expansion or contraction due to humidity or temperature that the idea that I had was that the hole was a bit bigger than the screw and it might allow for things to move a little bit without being too rigid because you know it's possible that if you bolted it down screwed it down really tight the dimension of the wood might want to shift a little bit and then I don't know, you might end up with some cracking or something because there's just too much tension going on. You'd have the wood doing one thing and the steel band uh, not following potentially what the wood is doing. Although with temperature, you know, they're both going to expand and contract probably different amounts because they're different materials. But um, I did it in a way that there's there's uh, one, two, three, four screws in it, not a lot of screws. And then I pushed this um, uh, foam insulating, uh, rubbery foam insulation material into the gaps where I could for two reasons. One is just to have contact um, where it might be a little bit like loose in terms of not touching the wood exactly but also to uh, dampen any sound like any resonance that might come from this metal band because um, I tapped on the shell I've got something resting against it it's shaking but um, before I put this foam rubber uh, door insulation material in there there was a bit of vibration from this metal ring and it you could actually hear it just a little bit you can hear the wood resonate and you could hear that metal resonate and once I pushed the foam in it dampened it like I pushed it in one spot here and a bigger spot over here once I did that, then I, well, I wasn't hearing any resonance from that metal at all. And one last point about this uh, reinforcement ring is that because I, I did it carefully and, and uh, pre-drilled the holes into the shell, I used small screws and so on, I can always remove this thing um, and there's no, there's no damage to the drum. There will just be four very, very small holes that don't even go right through the um, the shell. They only go part way into the shell. Just enough to, to grab it and to keep that, that ring in place. I'm going to soak the skin to make the, the head for this conga and um, just before I put it onto the drum, I'm going to take this furniture wrap and I'm just going to put some of this over the top of the drum. I don't want this wood to soak in the water while this thing is trying to dry. To cut the excess skin around the edge of the drum, I use uh, just a box cutter with a brand new blade on it.
not bad. 